What is going on guys? Welcome to this new tutorial series on advanced Python programming. Now advanced Python programming goes beyond beginner Python, it goes beyond intermediate Python, but at the same time it's not as specialized as let's say machine learning or data science or cybersecurity or finance or anything like that. Uh, we're talking about general skills of the Python language, which every programmer should know if they want to become a better Python programmer, of course. Um, so not not just a niche thing like game development or machine learning. It's just general advanced Python in the same way that intermediate Python was general intermediate Python or the Python tips and tricks tutorial series that I have on this channel is also about general Python. But in the advanced concept uh, tutorial series, we're going to talk more about stuff that is uh, software engineering Python. So making code more, re uh, more reusable, making it um, more beautiful, making it scalable making it more effective and so on. So we're going to learn different tools here like decorators, generators, functional Python programming and so on. And in today's video, we're going to start with magic methods or dunders. So let us get right into it. All right, so let us start talking about dunders or magic methods. Now dunder written like that essentially means double unders for double underscores. And we already know some double underscore methods. For example, if we have a class like person, we all know that there is something called a constructor, which is defined uh, by the name underscore underscore init, for example, and then we pass a self object here. And we have a name and an age, for example, and then we say self dot name equals name, and we say self dot h equals h. By the way, for those of you who are wondering what editor this is, this is NeoVim, this is Vim. Uh, I think since we're on an advanced level right now, it doesn't really matter which editor I'm using because for the beginner series, I use the Python idle because I don't want to confuse newbies to uh, with with using or by using PyCharm or Visual Studio Code. Then again, later on, I didn't want to use something uh, very specific that I'm using in my daily coding life, so to say. But now I think in the advanced series, you choose your own editor, I choose my editor, I think Vim Neo Vim is probably the best editor for me. So I'm coding with this one. Uh, and I think it has also a little bit uh, of an advanced tat uh, of an advanced touch to use uh, Vim in a tutorial. But again, you can choose whatever editor you like, this is not uh, going to limit you in any way. However, double underscore methods have a certain special type of being executed. So for example, if I create a new person object, and we all know this, because if you're watching the series, you should, of course, be familiar with basic object oriented programming, um, we can say p equals person, and then we can pass a name like Mike, and 25 years old. Uh, this is how you actually call the init method, you're not saying person dot init, you're not saying p equals person dot underscore underscore init, this is not how you do it. You say person, so you, you just specify the class name, and you call the class name, so to say. Uh, and this is what triggers the init uh, method. So it's not just called like a regular method. And we have a bunch of different methods that work like that. Now init is the, uh, the, the constructor, we also have the destructor by saying del. Um, I think del was the keyword, right? Keyword, right? So we say del. And here we can say, I don't know, print object is being deconstructed or deleted or whatever. So right now, if I execute this, we're going to see that message because Python automatically deletes those objects. So we can also do it manually. Um, manually, it would be done like del p. So if I'm using p later on, and Python is not automatically um, deleting it, we would delete it earlier, but then of course, we would have the problem of maybe we cannot use it anymore. However, whenever the object gets deleted or destructed, we're going to get this um, this thing here. So we can actually go ahead and say Python three main dot py. Uh, I think I need to save it first. Sorry. There you go. And you can see object is being deconstructed. So we construct it and then we trigger this uh, del function here. And of course, we already know, I think from either the Python tips and tricks tutorial series or from the intermediate series that we have uh, in Python something called operator overloading. So we can say, define and then we can define what happens when we add two objects. Now for persons, this may not make a lot of sense. So we're going to do a different class here, we're going to say the class is called vector. And a vector essentially has also the init, and then we have self and then we have x and y, for example, a two dimensional vector. 
Uh, and what we do is we say self dot x equals x and self dot y equals y. And then we say actually nothing more. Now the question is, we now have this vector class, and we probably know how to deal with vectors. But our Python script doesn't really know what a vector is, and it doesn't know what x and y actually means. Now for us, this is obviously, uh, this is obvious, we just need to say x plus x and y plus y, but the vector class has not defined the operation. So we can actually go ahead and do something like um, print or actually let's create them first vector one equals vector 10 20 vector two equals vector uh, 50 60 for example and then we want to say vector three equals vector uh, actually not vector sorry uh, v1 plus v2 so in our uh, in our imagination, what would happen here or how it's actually defined mathematically is we would have to say, okay, this is just a new vector with 10 plus 50 and 20 plus 60. Um, but we don't have the definition of uh, the addition here. So we haven't overloaded that particular operator yet. And if we just execute this, you're going to see that uh, we're going to get a type error unsupported operand types for plus vector and vector. This does not work. So what we need to do is we need to actually use a dunder, a magic method, and we need to say at self and other. So we need to pass the other object here. And then we can say, okay, the result here, we need to return it. The result is actually just a new vector. And this vector is going to have self.x plus other.x. Now this, of course, um, the, in, in this case, of course, other also has to be a vector, which of course, we're not checking because Python is dynamically typed. So we can also pass anything else. But if that anything else doesn't have the field x, we're going to get an error because we cannot just uh, add something that doesn't exist. So in this case, uh, we need to, to make sure that this is a vector. So self dot x plus other dot x self dot y plus other dot y, and then we would get a new vector as a result. So let's go ahead actually print the result afterwards. So we can say this x and y. There you go. So now you can see we got 60 and 80 because we're adding 10 and 50. And the next thing that we now maybe want to do and of course, before we get into that, we can also do sup and we can do multiplication, and we can do division and so on. But what we can also do is we can also uh, think about representing the vector because right now if I go ahead and say, okay, I'm not going to print the individual fields, but I'm going to print the whole vector here. What I'm going to get here when I do this is I'm going to get uh, just the vector object, I'm going to get just a message telling me, okay, this is an object of the class vector. Uh, but it doesn't really tell me anything about the values. And in order to change that I can change uh, one of two methods here, I can either change the string method here which uh, essentially says what happens when I type cast the vector into a string, or I can change the representation method here, which essentially tells me or we tell it how to represent uh, a vector when we need to represent it. So in this case, we could say, uh, if you represent the vector, what which uh, print does, for example, we just say return f string x is self dot x and y is self dot y, for example, like that. So we could do it like that. And if I now go ahead and do this, we're going to see that we get the proper representation here. Now, the purpose of this video is not showing you all the different dunders or magic methods that there are, but just showing you that this is how object oriented programming is done in Python. For example, in Java, you would do it in a different way. In Java, you would have something like def to string, and then you would have in this case, of course, in Python, the self object, and then you would return a string. And whenever you try to get the information about that vector object, you would say object dot to string, this is the Java way of doing things. And in Python, you do it with the representation dunder or magic method. Um, it's very important to know that because in Python, whenever you work on packages on larger scale projects on anything that's more complex than just a little script that you write on the side, uh, you will need object oriented programming principles, you will need classes and objects, and then you should know how to use them properly, you should not define two string methods. If we have uh, the representation magic method, for example, now, again, I'm not going to show you all the different uh, magic methods here, you can uh, find all of them by just saying, underscore underscore using autocomplete or looking at the documentation. But I'm going to show you two more. And the first one is the length. 
so l e n len and it essentially just triggers whenever you apply the length function onto an object. Uh, I'm just going to return 10 here and not the actual calculation it would be square root of x squared plus y squared, I think, for the vector length. But um, since the length of a vector is not defined, it's not a collection, it's not the amount of elements, uh, we would not have a definition here. And now if I say print the length of vector three, in this case, of course, I'm going to get always 10, no matter what I pass, as long as it's a vector object. Uh, but this is how you can manipulate that output, which is maybe quite important for vectors. Um, and then we also have something that's kind of interesting, maybe not for vectors particularly, uh, but the call, the call uh, magic method here, essentially what happens when you call the object, because in Python, you can call objects like functions. So you can say, for example, let's just print a message here. Hello, I was called like that. And now what you can do is you can go ahead and call v3, for example, and you're going to see that this produces the result, hello, I was called because we're calling the object. All right, so that's it for the first video of the advanced Python tutorial series. Let me know in the comment section down below if you like this series, if you want to see more videos here. Also, let me know by hitting a like button if you like this video. And if you learned something, of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.